Well, we got the Zenith um, 6S527 on the bench today, and I finished changing the rubber wire. There is a ton of this, and the capacitors. I got all the capacitors changed. Um, I checked these resistors. They are all within spec. Some of them are right on the edge, but I don't see a reason to be changing them. Somebody's been in here and changed a couple of these already. You can see these. <sighs> Somebody has worked on this before in the past, but um, they seem to have done an okay job. Not too horrible. Um, not that I'm an expert, but... Um, yeah, I got all the old crappy rubber wiring out, which... I don't know if I ever have another radio that has this little crappy wiring. I don't know if I'll do it. It's a pain. Um, yeah, and I got the uh, I got the uh, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, the dial cord changed, so it's got a new dial cord in it. Um, the old dial cord was a pretty good size. It looks like yo-yo string to me. That's what it looks like to me, yo-yo string. And it was loose in there. Um, I got some... Oh, I don't know what size. Yeah, point, point zero two eight. I got it from Bob's Radios. Antique Radios. Um, pretty good price. Not bad. Um, looking at it, it looks like almost like heavy-duty braided um, fishing line. But I don't know. Um, yeah, I got it installed. It's nice and nice and tight and tensioned up in there like it's supposed to be. I haven't lubed any of the pivot points yet. So this is feeling a little like it needs some lube on it. I should have taken it apart and uh, lubed it, but it works. I think some, some light oil on it will be okay. Works smoothly through. All of the um, through the band, all the way through the band spread. And now I took the face off the other radio, the the other six, uh, uh, the other uh, Zenith that I got for parts. And here are the two. This is the one that came off of this radio. And when the when the case is on, you can't see this, right? This damage right here. Um, this one's I think is in better shape. It needs to be clean, but I think it's in better shape. This is straight. I mean, it's got a little bit more something going on here, some crazing with the paint. But I think I'm going to put this one back on here. So fully mashed. Yeah. Yep. So it's turning in the right direction too. So there's fully mashed and the pointer would point this way so it would turn for your broadcast band on the bottom. So to go to high the wheel should turn this way to go to the high bands. And the, and the <clears throat> banana splicer should be all the way open. Yep. So I put it in there right. I got the <clears throat> I got the dial cord on there correctly. Um, like I like I showed you before, I put one of those adapter cap boards in here on a um, put a spacer. Used a grommet for a spacer to keep it up off of the chassis because it wasn't the hole wasn't the right size, and I didn't want to modify the case. So, um, I cleaned all of the um, point contacts with this, with the broadcast band, and then your presets. I cleaned all those point contacts in there. So this should work flawlessly now. I used the, um, the Deoxit uh, D5 on a Q-tip. You're able to take that piece of paper off the top of that and get in there with the q-tip with that on there and just really scrub those point connectors those points contact points 
So I think um, I think I just got to clean the tubes. Oh, I put a new cord on the. I, I installed a new power cord too. I really am not too happy with the routing of the power cord, but it's it's in there. I, th I think it'll be okay. I think it'll be all right. Not particularly happy with it, but and just tied a knot in it. Uh, yeah, just tied a knot in it down here. There's two holes in this um, board. And then just tie a knot in it, separate them and tie a knot in it, and then, <clears throat> you know, solder them onto the switch, and then down here for the neutral. Um, yeah, that's about where I'm at now. I got all that rubber wire changed out, and you can just see the the dust it creates This when it falls apart, man. It just makes a mess here. This was all over inside of this, and I haven't really like finally clean this case all the way um but boy was it a mess man this stuff just see there's still some in here yeah i'm gonna have to take it outside and blow it out yeah it's just nasty it's like confetti man it's worse than a well, I'm not going to say it, but it's bad. <laughs> Glitter on a stripper. Um, yeah, it's bad. So, yeah, this wiring is just junk. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if I'll do another one. And you know, all your old dead capacitors here. So, yeah, I think I clean the tube sockets and do a little bit of house cleaning on here. I'm going to get in here and get the, the cobwebs out of this and... I think we'll be ready to put the tubes back in it and try it. And I did make a little list of things that needed to be done to this. Oh, here's my drawing of the of the cord, of the dial cord. <laughs> yeah. I'm such an autist. Yeah. Yep. Here's my list. So to mark off dial cord replacement. So, getting really close. So, I guess the um, put the tubes in it and if if I did the wiring right which I should have I pulled them out one at a time I don't think I had more than two wires off at once um, put the tubes back in it, and if it works correctly double check the alignment um, I might adjust the presets but I might wait to do that until after I get it back into the case all the way um, set the presets to stations and then the rest of it is pretty much case stuff the cabinet getting the cabinet ready to roll so well I went out and blew the inside of this antenna out there was a lot of crap inside this wave magnet antenna a lot of crap in there um, clean the tubes up with just a wet paper towel uh, kinda wiped the chassis down got all the major dust off of it I'm not not gonna scrub it looks good enough for me I see that I need to put a piece of tape here to hold this up I'll do that but we're ready to try it make sure it's in broadcast yes broadcast switch is turned in okay switch is on turn it about half volume uh, Let's go ahead and turn this on. Okay, Variax turned on. The uh, dim bulb testers turned to one bulb, and the bulbs are on. So let's uh, let's crank up the power. Let's start at uh, let's 
about 60 volts here for a minute let it warm up can you see the amperage I don't know if you can read that or not it's a uh, 0.12 amps so it's not drawn very much the bulb isn't very bright okay there's about 95 volts why isn't that light coming on it must not be grounded is why yeah okay so both bulbs came on they ground through the um, dial faces of steel okay there's 90 volts 0.17 amps looks like about 15 watts Let's take her on up. There's 108. Bring her around around 90 volts. Nothing? Hmm, not very loud. Hmm. Got some static. There, there's going to be a lot of baseball that's left to be played, and we'll see where we stand at the end of it. Let's enjoy the moment. Uh oh, we're gonna have to check voltages. Oh, you know what? Dim bulb tester is on one bulb. Probably really restricting restricting the amps. So let's turn this back down to about 60. Let's put this on two two bulbs. Okay. Bring her back up to around 100 volts here. That's better. They continue to keep going through a tough schedule as they continue their series with the Red Sox. It's not. They go on and play the Angels. So 0.12 amps, about 21 watts. They are playing good competitive baseball against good teams. Now, Jake, I love. Plus, it's covered by this. What I love about you, but you already know that the fuel that powers my life is pessimism and empty cards. Woohoo! It works. I'm going to be looking at this schedule, looking at the lineup, and saying. Ooh, you still might want to see a little bit more. And there are really interesting conversations to have about that. That's how it is. Spencer Watts. Love Pine Tower. Quickly. Mr. Ramon Bruckett's in here. I know that the Mohawk is going away with that. So he was the Mohawk. I fear for my... It's really Segway, huh? Segway. I know. So I'm just getting all sorts of trouble with something like that. You can't. So let's see what this baby does. Full power. There's 117. Hearing some buzzing. That's not good. I was worried about my wire routing if I ran a wire too close to like an AC power or something. It's not controlled by the volume.
don't like the humming. Gonna have to figure that out. Alrighty then. Um, do some investigating here. Maybe I screwed up with the with the electrolytics? I don't know. I think it's more likely I ran I ran a wire close to a AC. Alright, I'll be back when I figure it out and show you what I find. Well, I figured out why it was humming so bad. Um, I'm going to look at the schematic. And the... Here's the old filter can that was in it. Three terminals. Plastic body. And it was just jammed inside that piece of plastic. There was no nut on it. It was just jammed in there. Gravity was holding it in basically. So you got two two sections, a 30, a 30, and a common. So I thought it was wired correctly when I got the radio. When I turned it on the first time, it hummed. I just assumed the electrolytics were bad. So I went ahead and changed it. Um, turned it back on, you know, after I got everything, all the rubber wire change and everything. You've seen that. It was humming. So, let's look at the schematic. They, <clears throat> pardon me. When z the Zenith engineers separated out the two um, negative sides of the electrolytic. So if we look at this, here's your two electrolytics right here and here. They have the voice coil on the other side, on the um, negative side, with a voltage divider set up here, and then the uh, center tap of the uh, transformer. So, the way I got the radio, this is the way it was wired. I marked the, because um, they're both red here, they're both red. So I marked one with the black dot with the sharpie, so I knew which one was which, right? Which wires went together on what terminal. And I made a little wiring diagram of it right here. So there was a red and a red, and then this is the red dot with, this is the red terminal with the black dot. This is a, okay, so red terminal with the black wire and a green wire, and then to the uh, common, ground side of it is a black and a brown well that didn't work it hums so this basically never had any voltage on it this had quite a bit of voltage and I tried bigger electrolytics on there and that didn't work so I went back to the schematic to make sure things were wired right and that's when I discovered this and this is my new drawing so we have the two electrolytics and the negative side center tap which is a brown wire off the center tap and we got a black wire with the new style wire that I put in and then we have the green which is the green I put in and then the black with the cloth so the black with the cloth goes to the voice coil center tap this black wire goes down to a terminal and is tied to the um, 470 ohm resistor or 470k K 470k which is this one so the center tap and this are tied together so that's that's how I figured it out so I got the polarity right on the speaker um, I have tried it and it works try it again here real quick the inrush amperage is about a half an amp so I don't think it's really terrible
I never received that station during the day here. So it sounds pretty good. It gets the interference that I normally get in my in my uh, workbench here. So and that uh, that Mexican music station, I just generally don't receive that during the day. So I used um, perf board. So prototype perf board for the um, electrolytic mounting. That seemed to work pretty good. Kind of a pain to make the the connections on the board. I do like those replace a caps. I just wish they they wouldn't work in this instance unless you modified the board and separated out the ground. And I guess you could remove the trace on the uh, on the cap. I guess that wouldn't have, that probably might be a better way to go if the if it fit in the hole better. Yeah, here's the one I had in it. I had to ground the corner of it off to make it fit. I guess a guy could put an electrolytic here because you can see the trace um, goes from here around for the for the ground side to here. So if you broke the trace here, if you broke the gold trace right there, then you could connect all your grounds and keep your electrolytics on this. But it's not very common that the can has two grounds on it. So if I find very strange that it would have two um, negative terminals on that electrolytic, the original one that came in there. I've never seen that before. Generally, um, you would have just another electrolytic, right? You would have two different electrolytics in there. But they didn't have room underneath. You know, you've seen how jam-packed the underneath of this thing is. So they had to put it above... And I'm not sure how they kept it from <clears throat> I guess it would have had two two common terminals on it that's I don't know how they marked it I, um, I, I'll have to look in that other old radio to see what that electrolytic looks like um, I'll show you the perf perf board repair I made you can't see it from the top side it's just buried in underneath every the the uh, preset switches so we'll kind of move in here a little bit I guess we'll push this back some so you can have some light and I will come in on it there you can see it there the perf board I made. Looks kind of bodgy, but it works. I'm not going to complain too much about it, it works. So, yeah. So, I guess check the alignment, make sure it's okay, and then uh, move on to repairing the case or whatever we're going to do to the cabinet, I guess. So, thanks for watching. Uh, leave a comment. have a good day well I drug the Audrino transmitter AM transmitter back out <clears throat> I thought it'd be interesting to hear this thing play the shadow radio that was made in I believe 1941 42 40 41 42 not 100% sure we'll click it on here real quick Turn it up a little bit. You hear that background noise of the Adreno.
the shadow. The hard and relentless fight of one man against the forces of evil. These dramatizations are designed to demonstrate forcefully to old and young alike that crime does not pay. Crime does not pay. There is enough anthracite for all the lucky householders whose homes are heated with hard coal. These homes are enjoying healthful warmth in every room. Even though winter winds blow, there is no need to cut down heat or close off rooms in homes heated with dependable hard coal. Yes, sir. And you have a supply of hard coal in your basement? You are the boss of heating your house. You are absolutely independent of any outside service. Be glad you heat with anthracite, the home heating fuel that never fails. And remember, blue coal is the finest anthracite money can buy. I believe this was first broadcasted in 1938, and the episode is The Laughing Corpse. The Laughing Corpse. Well, there's a couple of things I... Two things I wanted to show you more on this radio that... Um, I've kind of messed with since, um, well, since I filmed last. Uh, one of them was when I was testing the radio before, it did not have the dial pushed all the way back in. So um, I pushed it in and it was hitting this. So that explains why this was bent. The tuner had fallen down because of the grommets underneath of it. So now there's room here. Before they had this was bent down, I had straightened it with a pair of pliers. So I put the original one back on here. I thought um, I looked at them again, cleaned them up a bit, and this one does look a little bit better now that I straightened this out. It does look does look a lot better. Um, these knobs, I've got another set of knobs off the other radio, but they're they're way worse color. The color is way worse. They got staining on them. I think this one spent a lot of time with the smoker, this radio, the other the other radio. Um, I'm not sure what these are made out of, if they're Bakelite or Catlin or what they are, but <clears throat> they're molded. You know, you can tell they're just flashing here. They never cleaned off of it. Um, I might try the peroxide. I don't want them white. I kind of like this off kind of yellow color. It gives it an aged look, but the uh, these are the knobs off of the other radio. You see how dingy they are, and the knobs that came with this radio are in here. I haven't cleaned them up yet, but I will mess with them. Yeah, so I had to change the grommets on the bottom of the tuner, so that means this had to come off, this had to come off. I had to disassemble it a little bit, which is not that big a deal. It was pretty easy to do. I didn't have to disconnect any wires. And then there's another thing I wanted to show you in here. I don't know if I pointed it out before. Is this guy right here. I thought this was a capacitor. It is a resistor. I've no, I don't think I've ever seen a resistor like that before. Um, it's it's right on the money and it follows the color code perfectly and it's on the schematic and it's in the parts list. So, pff, wow, I really thought that was a um, capacitor. I really did think it was a mica mold type capacitor. <coughs> Very strange. So... Something else I wanted to show you was the mounting for the... They were kind of a pain to get to. A couple of them were. A couple of the screws were for the um, tuner. You can see one of them here. was you know, That one's easy to get to. Um, there's three of them. And i got to remember where the third one... There's one... I'm going to have to turn this a little bit. Yeah. One, two, there's the other one here. And then there's a third one. Uh, 
One, two, there's a third one. It's kind of not easy to get to. I can't remember where it's at now. Uh, it was kind of buried in here. I had to move a bunch of stuff to get to it. Yeah, right here. So this one's not so bad to get to. I guess this was a really hard one to get to. Here's the other one. One, two, three. And they're just grommets, just like the other, <clears throat> just like the mounting for the speaker was. Uh, grommet with a steel um, spacer sleeve in it. So, pretty simple. Uh, I did mess with the presets on the, <clears throat> pardon me. I did set the presets. Oh, sorry about my arm. I did set the presets on the on the front of it here. Lower this down a little bit. So this button here is turns it to the tuner. And then when you push any one of these other ones, it turns them on to these to these to the presets. And I did adjust all the presets. So it works like it's supposed to. Um, I double checked the alignment. It's all good. I had to make a little tiny tweak on it a little bit, but not much. Uh, the radio works pretty good, I think. Um, I think the next thing to do is to work on the cabinet. I'm going to leave this on here for now. The last thing I'll do before I put this back in the cabinet is take this cover off of this and inspect this speaker again to make sure it's perfect. Well, not perfect, but it, there isn't anything really wrong with it. It's got a pretty good sound to it through the, pardon me, through the uh, cardboard. So I don't think we're going to have any problems with that speaker. If I remember right, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. The cabinet and the um, chassis and all the knobs and everything, I think I might put that radio up for sale for parts on eBay I'm not sure I'm not a real big eBay fan but sometimes that's the only place you can find stuff so if anybody needs parts for a for a Zenith um, 6s 527 I've got another radio minus the the volume control but I have the old volume control here that could be sent could be sent to Mark Oppet to get repaired. I know Mark Oppet could fix this no problem. So the switch works good on this. There's nothing wrong with the switch part, the on off part. There's nothing wrong with it. The on off works perfect on this. It's just that carbon track on this as we had seen before that screwed up. Um, You've seen what the bottom side of that other radio looks like. Some of the components cannot be get gotten to because of the transformer meltdown. But there is a full set of tubes in it. Um, IF cans and those coils down below. The, the oscillator coils, the antenna coils, it's all there. Your uh, band switch, another tuner, all of your preset switches. Um, another speaker we did see that the speaker does need a little bit of work, but there's nothing wrong with the cone It's just the glue came undone around the outside So another antenna So if you need parts for a 6s527 leave a comment down below I'll See what I can do to to uh, get with you on it Thanks for watching and leave a comment down below